If you've not heard about Time Series Insights, this is your moment. Today with Rahul from the TSI team, we'll talk about the TSI Explorer and what you get in terms of user experience with the service. Thanks for watching the IoT Show. I'm Olivier, your host. We will be talking Time Series Insights user experience with Rahul today. Rahul, awesome. thanks for joining. Thank you so much for having me today. Yeah. Of course. Tell us a bit more about you beyond your uh -huh. first name uh, and what you're doing in the Time Series Insights team. Awesome. So I'm a product manager on the Time Series Insights uh, product management team. I've been with the team for about a, close to a year now. And I've been with Microsoft for three years so oh. far. Yeah. Good. You like it? I love it. I love it. TSI is a fantastic product and an even better team. Cool. So let's jump into it. You're here to tell us a bit more about the user experience in Time mm -hmm. Series Insights and, and what developers can do with that as well, right? That's exactly right. So some of you might recall that uh, we shipped a public preview update to our product last December. Okay. Right? Since then, the team has been uh, hard at work. Yeah. Right? The team has been hard at work. Uh, listen to customer feedback, giving them all of the features that they've been clamoring for. Mm -hmm. And I'm here to kind of show off some of those features that are now in our TSI Explorer. Awesome. Very often people, uh, when they hear Time Series Insights and get you know, the first view of the, the Explorer, just like, OK, it's just a way for me to visualize my Time Series data. Mm -hmm. It's way more than that, right? You can actually leverage Time Series Insights as a service for storing mm -hmm. the data, implementing analytics, visualizing the data, doing post-morning analytics on data, merging with data from other services as well, right? That's that's exactly right. So Time Series Insights is like your one-stop platform as a service mm -hmm. to manage all of your IoT data at scale. So what TSI Explorer does is gives you access to all of that data as well as rich visualization. So a lot of our customers are in the industrial IT yep. space. So a lot of them are used to operational analytics. Mm -hmm. So we make it super easy for them to create and recreate some of those operational analytics visualizations within TSI Explorer. Awesome. What's the typical user of TSI Explorer? So like I said, uh, an, operational, an operational supervisor on the yep. field, for okay. example, managing a windmill. So he might be using TSI Explorer to uh, plot the temperature of the windmill, okay. plot the vibration, the speed, right, the, or the power output of a particular windmill. Okay. And they're leveraging TSI for real-time monitoring, mm -hmm. for some sort of predictive analytics in the future, kind of identifying uh, historical trends and patterns, okay. looking at correlations both time-wise as well as across other dimensions. Okay. Yeah. Well, you got me excited. Now you need to show me. Absolutely. So let me kind of start with uh, uh, the tree section that you're seeing here. Right. So most of our users uh, might be familiar with this. It's, this is a time series a model hierarchy. So what the hierarchy does is it kind of adds context to your instances. right? So here you can, for example, see I have an environment called Contoso Fleet Analytics. So Contoso Fleet is a company that uh, has delivery trucks mm -hmm. that it leases out to different companies. Correct. right? So now I have different delivery trucks that you can see out here. Right? And through the hierarchy, I can kind of quickly visualize that, hey, these trucks belong to the type of terrain. Mm -hmm. They are actually in Brazil and least out adventure works. So uh, I can so you add did, context. You did the, you're the one who define that hierarchy, right? Absolutely. That's okay. exactly right. So uh, time series model, you can do that through the Explorer as well as through our API. You can create a time series model, okay. create that context. And then TSI will map, so let's, say, let's assume we actually plugged IoT Hub mm -hmm. uh, to TSI to have a source of data. That's and exactly. so TSI will make sense of the telemetry data that is coming in with right. that Yuriki definition, right? Exactly okay. correct. Yeah, perfect. So earlier, you know, when we launched our public preview in uh, December, Right? So we had a limitation of only being able to display 10,000 instances in okay. this hierarchy. Okay. We have now lifted that limitation so you can display as many instances as you actually have. Wow. We've done a whole bunch of work to optimize the perf as well. So it's going to be super fast and smooth to kind of quickly navigate and nice. find all of your instances. You have to wait for the browser or two. Uh, exactly. <laughs> That's exactly right. And a lot of our users are loving this because they can get to their data really quickly, and which yeah, is yeah, why yeah. they come to yeah. TSI. And you can do searches, right? You can exactly. do searches. You can, you can do search. You can find it. You can navigate through the hierarchy. You can browse. It's super powerful. Got it. Cool. Perfect. So let me plot uh, the temperature of this truck. Mm -hmm. right? So this is the average temperature that's being sent back from uh, the truck itself. Okay. Right? And if you notice, that came back really quickly. Yeah. And that was about 
seven days worth, of, oh, sorry, 11 hours worth of data. Okay. Right? Now I'm gonna drag the slider and expand it further, right? To get back 81 days worth of data. If you nice. notice, that came back really, really quickly. R really quick, yeah. yeah. So uh, we've uh, done a ton of work to make that super fast and performance mm -hmm. so that you can trend days worth of uh, data mm -hmm. or hours worth of data just as quickly. Cool. And TSI is my storage solution, or or do I need to actually have a storage account, a Cosmos DB instance? So what is actually ho ho hosting that data, really? Right. So behind the scenes, we are built on top of Azure Storage, so you can bring your own storage account, and okay. then we can we will partition that data so that we can get these super fast queries. Got it. The TSI is doing the heavy lifting of all of that exactly and can right. host uh, as well as uh, you know having a storage account under the hood. Basically. Exactly. So Got you it. can bring your own account or we provision one for you when you're provisioning a TSI instance if you don't have Makes one sense. already. Makes sense. Right. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. So, so the queries were super fast. So let me uh, change it to a more manageable time frame for the purpose of this demo. Right. And I'll plot uh, speed. Okay. Right. So here I have the average speed of a truck. Right, mm -hmm. Let me zoom into a particular region. Right. It's now, pretty intuitive, right? You don't exactly. need to be a data scientist to understand how to get to your data. I like that. Exactly. It's super easy for you to kind of start deriving insights. Right. Now, if you notice, right, there is a solid blue line mm -hmm. followed by a solid, uh, by a lighter blue shadow. Yeah. Right. So what the shadow is trying to indicate is it's indicating a range of values in that particular interval. Right. So it, at that particular time, right. So you had an average value of speed of 106 miles mm -hmm. per hour, yep. but then the truck was doing a minimum of 92 and a maximum of 190, 124. Mm -hmm. So what this gives operational analysts is one quick view of looking at the range of values that their data is uh, that's being sent back on the wire, Love right? It. And all of these options are very easily configurable here, right? So you can turn on or off these shadows depending on whether they make sense for the instance. Mm -hmm. You can add data point markers so you can see exactly where the value is, yeah. right? And then for uh, for time series where it makes more sense, you can also turn on stepped interpolation. So for example, you have a discrete time series, something like, hey, this truck is has a speed higher than 90 miles per hour. Mm -hmm. That's a binary value. So you can plot it as a stepped plot. So you can kind of see it as a stepped uh, plot nice. instead of instead of a continuous value. Nice. Right. So this is something that we've added based on customer feedback as well very recently. Yeah. And TSI is making sense of all, all of that based on telemetry and the, the, the data model, the hierarchy you've been defining, right? That's exactly right. So all the customer needs to do is send a JSON property back which says this is the value, uh, mm -hmm. this is this is the name of the value, this is the value, and that's it. And everything else is done by TSI. Super powerful, love it. Awesome. Uh, the other couple of things that uh, our customers really, really do on a day-to-day -day basis is find correlations. Mm -hmm. So every day they might want to say, hey, I've noticed these particular dips and trends in my power production today. Is this a seasonal? Is this a seasonal trend? Has mm -hmm. this happened a year ago? Has this happened yeah. a week ago? Mm -hmm. Right. Sometimes in manufacturing, you might see customers who say things like, "I had a golden batch that was produced at four in the morning on the twenty fifth. Mm -hmm. Right. I want to compare this batch against that golden batch, and let's see if every metric looks correct." So we made it super easy for people to go perform those sorts of computations. Yep. So one of the things that most of our customers do on a daily basis is compare these values that they're seeing right, from their machines against uh, to identify seasonal patterns or Co correlations, right? So you might, you might have a golden batch that, you're, that you've manufactured at mm -hmm. four in the morning on the yeah. 25th, and you want to see if the current batch's metrics matches those, okay. right? Or you want to find correlations and patterns. So say, hey, this, I'm seeing the temperature be uh, X degrees Celsius mm -hmm. yeah. at this time. I want to see if it's the same seven days ago or 24 hours ago. So we call the uh, we call these types of analysis time shifts. Okay. And now TSI has a way for you to kind of do those very very easily, mm -hmm. right? So here you can uh, add. Um, hang on. Let me take that from the top again. Yeah, time shift very easily. So here you can. Uh, Pick a time series instance, mm -hmm. and then quickly choose between a range of options for your time shift. And you can specify a custom time shift as well. So let me uh, choose 24 hours earlier and hit apply. And then just as easily, you end up seeing the same time series instance 
shifted by 24 hours. And now for further correlation, I can simply stack both of those charts and then try to identify patterns. Magic. It, that was super easy, right? And another thing that our customers do is also identify patterns across different dimensions and not just time, mm -hmm. right? So you might want to measure the correlation between speed and fuel consumption, okay. or maybe coolant and temperature, mm -hmm. right? And for these sorts of analysis, right, a lot of our customers uh, tend to prefer scatter plots, and mm -hmm. we just started supporting scatter plots within TSI Explorer as well. Okay. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to just add uh, coolant, okay, as well as temperature with my well. Click on the exploration window, choose scatter plot, and then just make sure that the X measure is what I want, the Y measure is what I want, okay. coolant versus temperature. I can optionally specify a radius measure as well to see if the size of the circle, right? And hit apply, and I can start identifying correlation patterns. Awesome. Yeah, you would see an a aggregation of these points. It exactly. will tell you something about the relationship exactly. between these two measures. Okay. So now TSI can yeah. go from just doing time-based correlations with data mm -hmm. to actually much more richer analysis that you might need on the field, right? And just in that same spirit, we also introduced heat maps. So now you can see the range of a value explore, uh, expressed as a heat map. Okay, so that's very intuitive for people. And actually, people watching this data can also export uh, reports from that, right? They can exactly. actually uh, share that information they identified into their business application or through the communication tools. That's exactly right. So you could, uh, you could save this view and then share it as a link on your favorite uh, messaging app or yep. email, whatever. You can also download all of this data as a CSV file, use Excel, or Power BI, or any of these other business reporting tools as well. Super powerful. Perfect. Uh, even I could do it. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Perfect. So the one thing that I'd like to call out is all of this rich power mm -hmm. is now part of our JavaScript SDK. So you can just as easily integrate all of these charts, scatter plots, heat maps, the time shift charts that we talked about as part of your line of business applications. And I was about to ask, which is sharing the Explorer view, mm -hmm. it might be actually overwhelming for specific you know, audiences, right? You right. want to share that to, specific, to, to a maintenance guy. What he needs right. is, is a filtered view of all of that in right. a simpler dashboard, typically. Exactly. And the other uh, scenario that we've seen with customers, especially, uh, in large enterprises is they want to take their operational data and then mm -hmm. view it alongside their business data. So imagining an exec in charge of an oil rig mm -hmm. at a large oil and gas company, they want to see uh, the health of their oil rig as yeah. well as the health of their business all in one particular dashboard. And using the JavaScript SDK as well as our connectors into Power BI really, really enable you to go do that. Yeah, and I've been playing around with the JavaScript SDK. It's super powerful in terms of changing the look and feel for adapting to your application, right? Absolutely. Uh, and by the way, they're used in IoT Central, which are a SaaS Spot offering, uh, right. for delivering that experience allows you to dive into the data in the form of graphics and charts and so forth. Absolutely. Cool, Rahul. That's a nice, you know, uh, perspective on the UI, on the user experience for uh, Time Series Insights. I hope we get you back on the show for more. Uh, and you guys, you can go try out Time Series Insights and play around with the Explorer. Looking at the links below and check out the JavaScript as the case. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Olivier. Thanks. Yeah. See you soon. Thanks for watching the IT show. Don't forget to subscribe and check out the links for learning more.